Hi, I'm Paul. Welcome to my messy workshop. Every year, Nicole and Mark Spagnolo put on a build and it's Woodworkers Fighting Cancer. They make a donation for every project that's completed and they also have corporate support. This year, the build is a castle bookcase. I went on their site, downloaded the free plans, and now I'm going to build that project, so stick around and we'll get it built. Well, I went to my local big box store and I bought a sheet of pure bond, pure bond plywood. There's a cut sheet included in the instructions, so I have it cut to rough dimensions. Right now I'm putting edge banding on the show side. And I decided to use edge banding because it takes paint well if I decide to paint it, takes stain well if I decide to stain it, and it gives me a nice finished edge. I'll do that to all the show faces on the project. I'm doing the sides first. The sides are going to require some dados, some holes cut in them, some uh, saber saw work at the tops. What I'm doing now is I cut the design on the top of the side and I'm putting some more edge banding on because in my opinion it's easier to put on edge banding than it is to try and fill the, the plywood edges with wood filler and sand them off. Uh, it's kind of a pain in the neck cutting this stuff to fit but I, I just think it's, in the long run, it's easier and it looks better. And that's all there is to it. Then I just have to go back and, and trim the sides uh, just a little bit and it'll fit perfect. Then what I'll do is I'll just work my way around fitting pieces here and on the top. And any, any surface that's going to show, I'll put edge banding on. I've cut a couple of the dados in the two sides. And the way I've done it is I've got them clamped together. I've got clamps on the ends to hold them smooth. I've got a pipe clamp to make sure the joint is smooth and tight. I've put a straight edge across there. I have my plywood bit in the router. And all I'm going to do is... Route the next uh, dado. And take some sandpaper and clean off the fuzzies. And that's all there is to it. I've got one more dado to cut. And then all the dados for the sides are done. It's time to cut a rabbit along this back edge of the side to house the back panel. So I've got my bit and my router. I've got it set the right height and the fence the right depth from it, and so we'll cut that rabbit. There's the rabbit cut, and I'll do the other side, and then that step will be done. I just finished cutting out the windows on the sides. The way I did that is I made a pattern out of masonite or hardboard, and I made that the exact same size as the windows. Then I placed that on the side, traced out my window with a pencil, and I rough cut this opening with a jigsaw. I left it about an eighth of an inch proud all the way around. Then I took my pattern and I attached it with some 23 gauge pin nails. I put a pattern bit in my router and I let the bearing follow the pattern and it gave me a nice smooth cut all the way around the inside of the window. Now the only thing I have to do is to square up the corners with a chisel. Well, I have the sides done. I have the windows all trimmed out with iron-on edging. 
in a couple, a couple spots it was too tight to get the iron in there so I had to put some wood glue on it but I've got that done I've got them all smoothed down and I've taken and marked where I want my screws to go that hold the shelves in then I took a small drill and I drilled through the center of the dado through to the other side so that I could mark where I want to do my counter sinks for my screw heads. The screw heads are going to be countersunk and then filled with wood putty. So I have that done and I have all the holes marked and now I'll just take a drill with a with a little bit bigger bit and a counter sink. Let me see if I can zoom in a little closer here. There we go. A drill with a counter sink and I'll just go to those holes And I'll do a countersink deep enough to get the head of the screw well below the surface of the side of the shelf. Then after I install the shelves, before I paint, I'll fill that with wood putty and sand it all down. And you'll never know that there's a screw there holding the shelf in. And then the next step will be we'll temporarily install the shelves. And I'll come back when I get ready to do that. What I'm doing now is I'm putting together the main carcass of the bookcase. And it's just temporary. I haven't glued anything. All I'm doing is fitting the shelves to the sides. And I'm putting them in with screws. Like I say, there's no glue. I'm gonna put this part of it together. After it's together, then I'll cut and fit the bottom skirt. I'll cut and fit the dividers that go between the shelves. And I'll cut and fit the trim that goes on the top here. So what I'm doing now is I have all the shelves attached on that side and I'm going to attach them on this side. And it's just a matter of get the the dado is so exact that it takes a little tweaking to get the shelves to fit in their place but uh, I'll get it in and when I've got it all screwed together I'll be back. Here is the rough assembly. I may cut the back and temporarily put it on just to keep it in square. I have to put the trim pieces up here. I have to put the dividers between the shelves. Get all that stuff cut. Get the front skirt measured. We're making good progress. Well it's time for an update. I've been making the dividers that go in, be in the shelves and I start out cutting a piece of plywood to size and I edge band the edge that's going to show. Then I made a template for the opening in each of the dividers. I take that template, I attach it to one of the dividers, I mark it and I go over to the bandsaw and I roughly cut it out. I leave about a sixteenth to an eighth of an inch all the way around the opening. When I get all these made, then I'll take them over to the router table. I'll attach the pattern to them and I'll take a pattern bit and I'll clean up this inside edge with the router. Then I'll put the uh, edge banding on the inside, get it all flush and that'll be that step complete. So I'll be back when I get that done. Well, I feel like I've reached a milestone. I have all the parts cut, all the edge banding put on, any pocket holes I'm going to use, I have them drilled, and I'm ready to sand. And I think there's going to be quite a bit of sanding. I am not going to videotape that because if it's boring for me to do, it's got to be boring for you to watch. So I'm going to go ahead and do a bunch of sanding. I'm going to take the bookcase all apart, sand each part individually. Then I'm going to take some time and I'm going to paint whatever parts I can paint with it apart and then put it together and finish the paint. So I'll probably come back and show you some of the painting, but I'm not going to bore you with the sanding. Well, you think sanding is boring. Standing around watching paint dry is even more boring. I've got a couple coats of paint on it. I used I used uh, 
Glidden, Glidden Diamond, and it's 100% acrylic paint. It's got a primer and the color all in one, and I put it on with a foam roller. So I've got the paint on it. I've still got a couple pieces to paint, but I ran out of places to put parts. So uh, I'm going to let this dry probably overnight, and then uh, I'll start putting it together, and I'll also paint the rest of the part. I'll be back when I start putting it together. Time for another progress report. It's all put together. All the dividers are in. It's got two coats of paint on it. If you'll notice on the sides, I don't know if you can see or not, there's some spackle on there where I'm just touching up some nail holes that didn't, or screw holes that didn't cover real well. Let me see if I can zoom in on there. You, there you can see them. And I'm just put some spackle on them and I'll let that dry and uh, sand those off. <laughs> Once that's all done, then it's time to put the, the brick design on the sides and that'll probably be the next update. I've taken painter's tape and I have masked off what's going to end up being the mortar joints between the blocks. And all I did is I took, I can't remember if it was three quarter inch or one inch painter's tape and I slid it in half and I wasn't trying to be careful to get a nice straight line because I kind of wanted rough edges on the brick. And so I've got it all masked off and now I'm going to paint it with a darker color so that it'll look like brick with light mortar between them. Well, our bookcase is done. Came out great. After I got the masking tape off, the finish looks like stone. I continued that across the front. I put some plastic feet on the bottom because it's going on carpet. And if it got moved on carpet, I didn't want to risk chipping the edge of the plywood off. So I just put some plastic feet on it. The original design called for a drawbridge right here. This is going in a library at a school and our daughter's a librarian there. And she and I discussed it and we decided to leave the drawbridge off. One, because it could create a lot of chaos with kids playing with it all the time. And if that happens, chances are the life of the, dry, the drawbridge would be short-lived. So we just decided to leave it off and it gives more places to store books. So the next part is going to be we're going to deliver this over to the school and we'll show you where it's going to spend the rest of its days. Well, I hope the wind noise isn't too bad, but we're here at St. Robert Catholic School in Flushing, Michigan, and that's where we are going to drop off the bookcase. So we'll be inside in just a minute and we'll see where it's going. And there is the final home of the bookcase. It's going to replace this bookcase that's right behind it, so it'll fit right in that notch there. And it should give quite a few years of satisfying service. Well, that was another fun build here in the Messy Workshop. This project helped a bunch of ways. Number one, it helped me gain some more woodworking experience. It helped the library at St. Robert Catholic School. Now they have a nice bookcase to put some more books on. And the money it raises through Woodworkers Fighting Cancer will help cancer research. So thanks so much for tuning in. I appreciate everybody's support. If you would, please give me a thumbs up. If you haven't already, subscribe to my channel and you'll get notifications of any new videos I put out. So until the next time, I guess I better get busy cleaning up my shop because it's still messy. Bye for now.